Buenos días, buenos días. Hoy es lunes, lunes, 23rd of August. You realize in a little while we're going to have Labor Day? Labor Day, summer's gone. Summer's gone. I pray you're safe. I pray you're well. My wife and I are vaccinated. I hope you do, but if you don't feel comfortable getting vaccinated, Mazel tov. Don't get vaccinated. Do what you feel. Nobody, uh, certainly I won't try to coerce anybody to do anything. Uh, take whatever proper precautions they're telling us to do, and it's crazy. Is it not crazy? By the way, if you didn't tune in on Sunday, two Sundays ago, the 15th. I know we're going back a little bit. Tune in and, and go online and get the 9 a.m. service. Our guest speaker, my friend Ron Olivier, who was in Angola prison and now miraculously is in charge of all the chaplains in the state of Mississippi. Look at that sermon. I'm not one to tell you, tune in and hear this sermon or that sermon. Listen to that message. The 15th of August. 9 a.m. We're in this mysterious part of chapter 9 of Romans, which seems to bring us to an unsolvable problem. How does God rule and reign, and yet people make choices, and when they make them, they're culpable? You know what culpable is? They're worthy of guilt and shame or commendation. Why? Because that's the choice they made. No, God is ruling and reigning and forcing them to make those choices because nobody can work against his will. So now we have the clash. Remember, it's worth just mentioning over and over again, the divine will against the human will and how they coexist. And as I said before, I can, I can help you with this. Don't argue about that with anybody. There are some people, you know, doctrinal things really can get nasty. Over these verses and an understanding of God's uh, sovereignty, right? Blood has been spilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just arguments and, and ink and uh, writing terrible articles, are uh, fighting against people. You're false teaching and all that, and they're born-again people that they're talking about who love the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's changed their life, but no, they're a demon now. Why? Because you don't agree with my position, and on both sides, both sides. So let's read it again so we understand the uh, statements Paul wants us to consider. It's not as though God's word had failed with the Jewish people rejecting. Jesus, not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. It's just the one who came by promise. God gave that promise not to everyone, but the promise was not for Esau, not for Ishmael, although they had Abraham's blood, uh, DNA. No, no, it was God choosing because he chooses, because he sits on the throne. Why are some in a family called to be pastors? And then the other one uh, never is a pastor. But he, he grew up better than, uh, was a better Christian than the, the other, his brother who was chosen into the ministry. Because God said it. You know, God's not asking us to vote on things. He makes these choices, and if we trust him and love him, we submit to that. And we root for the calling that God has and the people that God chooses, we root for them. We don't fight against that. So he goes on to say, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned, then through Jacob. In other words, it's not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I'll return and Sarah will have a son. By God's choice. Not only that, verse 10, but Rebekah's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, 
not by works, but by him who calls, she was told the older will serve the younger. No, the older's in charge. The older gets the blessing, not the younger. No, no, God says the older will serve the younger. But that's, no, that's what God says. Jacob will be over Esau. I know, but what's wrong with Esau? God chose Jacob. And we have to rest with that. Before they had done evil or good. Now he's talking about a line of people and a line of nations, as it were. Esau became the father of his own people, the Edomites. Just as is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Not hated literally, but <clears throat> rejected as compared to Jacob, who is my choice. So I want to remind you of these things. When we're faced with this unsolvable mystery of the infinite God, what you have to do is keep your eyes on Jesus. Well, that's not fair. I'm scared now. You mean, and, and people who believe in the sovereignty of God and the election, with no free will, no choice, God's already decided and, and that's it. You're, you're going to be a Christian whether you want to be or not. Why? Because God chose you. Human will has nothing to do with it. A well-known Bible teacher said, uh, who holds that position, you know, sometimes at three or four in the morning, I wake and with a cold sweat because I think, what if I'm not the chosen one? What, I know I have fruit in my life, my life's been changed, but what if those are all false signs and I'm the Esau that's rejected? and there's nothing I can do to change it. That I find repugnant. I never see that kind of thinking in the New Testament, but better yet, here's what you have to do when these mysteries of God's election and Romans 9 and 10 come before us. Look at Jesus. What did he say? Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Whosoever will may come. Why do you reject me? And he wept over Jerusalem. This is one of the great moments that solves this problem when we get concerned. He wept over Jerusalem. Now, if he had programmed Jerusalem to reject him, as some would say, you make Jesus a bad actor, excuse that expression, for our Lord. You make him crying over people that he forced to reject him. Well, then what are you crying for? How can you cry over people who couldn't do anything other? No, 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 no. Well then, past symbol, what is it? Do we have rejection power and acceptance power? Yes, but wait a minute, doesn't God rule over all? Yes, so how do you put the two together? You can't. You preach one and believe one when you see it, and you believe the other. Who says that your little finite mind, my finite mind, could understand the mystery of these things? We're going to talk more about that tomorrow when we talk about systematic theology. Don't miss it. Have a good day in Jesus. Amen.